fascinating as, a, as an idea. And I think, by the way, that we physicists are also largely to blame in many ways for the fact that Darwin isn't appreciated more than he is. We, we did a wonderful public relations campaign for Albert Einstein. But I, I have to say, as I have over the last few years have spent time in the public debate about evolution versus intelligent design, I really do, do think that if I had to pick the greatest scientist of the last few hundred years, it would be Charles Darwin and not Albert Einstein, that a single person could so radically change an entire field and combining observation and theory just yeah. amazes me and yeah. we really should be promoting what a remarkable human achievement that was. Well, I, I think that is right. Um, I mean, one, one way to put it is that the, the ratio between that which a theory explains as the numerator and that which you need to assume in order to explain it as the denominator Darwin wins out on that. I mean, what, what, what Darwin explains is everything about life, human life, animal life, plant life, the diversity of life, the complexity of life, everything is, is explained by one simple idea. It's an idea so simple that you can express it, actually, I think in a single word, uh, heredity. Once you've got on a planet anywhere in the universe, high fidelity replication of coded information I think everything else then follows. You'd probably need to add a, a, a little bit more than that. On the other hand, when you compare the achievement of an Einstein with, uh, with a Darwin, a, a Newton with a Darwin, I think you need to be a lot brighter to be an Einstein. I mean, you know, any fool could have been a Darwin. It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> Let me clarify that. <laughs> it is a, it's somewhat baffling to me why we had to wait for our Darwin until the middle of the 19th century. Uh, 200 years after we had to wait for our Newton. You would think that the idea of evolution by natural selection could have occurred to any philosopher in an armchair from the Greeks onward. Not one of them got it. Not a single one of them got it. But I think that for me it's funny that you say that. Maybe the grass is always greener on the other side, but I think as a physicist how much harder it would be to have been Darwin. My mother wanted me to be a doctor, and I and and um, and I and I I realized I couldn't partly because I, I classification was not when when I grew up biology was classification unfortunately, and um, and I realized that that's just something I I couldn't do very well, and and I think uh, well you probably know more about this than I do that but observation was such a key part of what Darwin did that I don't know if I mean it, of course after the fact. Anyone could have had the idea. And w one says that about many things in, in science. After the fact, it's a lot easier to understand where it came from. But having the idea, I think Darwin, it, it, it's, it's, it's so beautiful yet so subtle that, I, that, all the, that his expedition on the Beagle and, and, and all the years he spent observing things was an essential part of, of ramming into the skull of someone who, after all, evolution is everywhere, but at the same time, it's nowhere. It's, it's, it, it requires an understanding of cosmic time in a way that uh, is essential to understand what's here and now. And of course the same is true about, uh, in some sense, astrophysics, but, uh, but, but the fact that many people are, are, are comfortable thinking about the cosmos in grand scales, but thinking about our own selves in that, in that way and understanding, I mean, one of the big problems of people understanding evolution is this realization that the Earth has been around a hell of a long time, and so has life. And without that cosmic time, the concept of evolution would, would, would clearly be wrong. Yes. You, you have to be able to, to, to grasp the immensity of, of geological time. It's interesting, by the way, that, uh, that, that Darwin was almost scooped by, by Alfred Wallace, and both of them, they were very similar, they had very similar careers. In they were both naturalists, they both traveled the world, they both spent a lot of time in the tropics alone, uh, free to think. Wallace actually had the idea in a, in a fever dream, in a, in, in, in a moment of lucidity in the middle of having a high, a high fever with malaria. I love that story. I mean, I love the thought that it, that it took a kind of fermenting high temperature uh, in, in, a, in a brilliant man's brain to, to, to get this, this idea. It'd be good to know what other thoughts he had at the same time. I know, time, yeah. Anyway, so. yeah. Um, but Nevertheless, the, the idea, when you grasp it, as you say, it, it, is, it is very simple, whereas Einstein and uh, quantum theory, y you no doubt understand them, I don't, and I bet most people here don't understand them, um, 
because it seems to me to be much further from what the human brain is set up to comprehend. I mean, perhaps we ought to talk about that, actually, but maybe not now. But yeah, it would be fun to talk about that a little bit. I think, I think uh, I'd agree with you. Certain things, like quantum mechanics, no one understands. We, we do it, but we don't understand it. Uh, and that, no, that's vitally important, I think. We, we, there are certain things we will never have an intuitive understanding of, and it probably relates to evolution. It probably relates to the fact that we're classical beings and the way the world behaves at a fundamental level is just something that we have no direct or even, well, no direct experience of. We can try and build up an indirect understanding, but we just, it, it works. But it is so counterintuitive to realize that at a, at a fundamental scale, objects are doing many things at the same time, when you, whereas going you and I Going through two slits, for example. Yeah, doing, yeah, going through both slits at the same yes. time, or a lot more than both slits. But, and we, we exploit that, and, and as I say, maybe we'll talk about that. But the interesting thing is, I guess, that to me, it's not so clear that at least evolution, and well, you get male, I get male, and, and it's obviously not intuitive clear to many people that, that um, what evolution is, I, you know, I was telling you before, just before this, I got a letter last night because I, I was doing something that happened a bit on TV from a woman who said to me, well, okay, I, um, I like, I, I don't know if she said she liked watching me on TV, but she said she did. And, uh, but she said, now, I just want to know one thing, who decided which ape would evolve and which wouldn't? <laughs> and, 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 but, but no, but I think that's the kind of immediacy people have and the, and the confusion people have with evolution is the sense that that's exactly how it works instead of working with populations and and so in, it, it is this beautiful idea is still one step removed from our from our direct experience and I think that's one of the reasons why one, just one of the reasons why people are so, so many people are are, are so uh, abjectly opposed to it it appears to uh, go against what they what they what the direct experience I think there's much more to it than that but Ernst Meyer, the, the grand old man of the neo-Darwinian synthesis who died at the age of 100 a couple of years ago, he put it down to essentialism, the modern name for what people like Plato, I mean, one could call it the dead hand of, of Plato. Uh, it, essentialism means people think there's an essence of rabbit, an essence of rhinoceros. You, I mean, a rabbit is a rabbit is a rabbit, and, and, and rabbits have, have the same sort of eternal verity as triangles to Euclid. And, I mean, maybe all, all the Greeks like that thought like geometers. Yeah. And so a, 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 a rabbit was a thing which kind of hanging out there in space, the ideal rabbit. And so the idea of a rabbit evolving into anything else, or, or an ape evolving into anything else, is utterly foreign. But it seems to me that that's a different and much smaller order of foreignness than the idea of a particle going through two slits, and in some sense knowing whether, whether, I forget what, you, you have to explain the thing. It's, but, but it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely ridiculous what particles do when they go through two slits. It's, yes. uh, it, uh, no, I mean, because, because it, it, well, okay, we'll do this now. Um, uh, they, so, when I throw a baseball, I'm a big baseball fan, when I throw a baseball, it, it takes a known trajectory, usually, and, um, and ends up in, the, in, the, in, a, in a catcher's hand. And, and we can calculate that, and we force students uh, through endless, boring calculations to calculate that. Uh, and, but when you throw an electron, of course, it doesn't do that. It does